Welcome to Gardening Coast to Coast, a new series I'm doing with Kim. You may know her as Callie Kim. We wanted to come up with a series that was different than her normal channels, and we came up with Gardening Coast to Coast. It's going to focus on one vegetable. We're focusing on peas in this series. So it is March 14th, and this is what we deal with in Zone 7 in the Northeast. We are getting basically February's weather right now, and it's going to be about a week of cold nights, 20 degrees or less. We have snow on the ground. And this is part of what we want to do with this series. As we're struggling with this, I know that Kim's peas are dealing with 90 degree temperatures. What we hope is we can do one episode that really shows you different growth stages for a vegetable so you don't have to go searching around finding different um, videos for what you're doing at that time. So you can just watch this video and you're going to get to see on my end I'm going to do uh, seed starting, transplanting them into the ground, into containers. I'm going to talk about frost protection. And on her end, her peas are actually ready to be harvested. She's dealing with the warmer temperatures, and warm temperatures can be a problem for your cool weather crops like your peas and lettuces. When the heat comes, the plants bolt, they flower, they become bitter, and they stop producing. And that's sort of what Kim is dealing with right now in California. But let me show you how to get them started. So two weeks from today, when my ground has finally thawed, hopefully, I'll be able to get these into the ground and have a jump on the season. You can provide a lot of frost protection for your cool weather crops by using plastic uh, cups that are rigid. You want the hard ones because you can press them into the ground and the wind's not going to blow them over. But for the last week we've had temperatures in the low 20s, even in the teens, and you can see that by adding these cups, most of the plants fared pretty well. well that one will need to be replaced. But it gave them enough protection that they're going to be okay, at least four out of six. Let me show you what happened to plants that weren't protected, and then I want to show you uh, how the plants did in here in a sort of double protection. Plastic rigid cups and a bag that was pulled up over this. The unprotected peas just couldn't deal with 15 degrees below freezing in some cases. Peas are great at dealing with a frost. If you go three, four, five degrees, but when you get down to 10 degrees, 15 degrees below freezing, they're just not going to make it. You can see that they've yellowed out and they're dead. They're going to need to be replaced. Now you can use a clear plastic trash bag to give another uh, level of protection for your cool weather crops. You can also use this to sort of make a hothouse tomato cage if you want to get your peppers and your tomatoes out early. But again, we got really cold temperatures this week. And these are my container peas. The rigid plastic cups work really well. The plastic bag pulled up and closed off like a teepee gives another level of protection. And basically you're making two microclimates. The microclimate from the plastic bag and from the plastic cup. And I can actually feel the heat pouring out of here. And they did really well. These are going to be perfectly fine. One tip to keep in mind is today it's now 60 degrees. So with the sun, uh, out, no clouds or anything like that, the inside temperature of this can heat up pretty high. So when it creeps into the 60s, you really want to quickly get this tent down because you could actually burn your plants out with too much heat. One of the most important things to understand about peas is that they're cool weather vegetables. They can take a frost, they can take a freeze. I put the pea transplants back here in about four weeks ago and I also dropped some seeds in back in February when Mother Nature once again fooled me when I thought there was going to be an early spring. But right after I planted them, we got a week of freezing temperatures. The temperatures got down to the 20s, 12 degrees below freezing. And you can see the top growth got beat up, but the roots survived, and they're sending up shoots. Here's a good example right there. So those transplants are going to do perfectly fine. The pea seeds also all germinated, even though they sat in there for three weeks. Because this is a raised bed, the soil drains well, you don't want to plant peas where it's soggy, because a lot of times, if it's cold and soggy, the seeds are going to rot. You can also drop chicken wire down. That will stop rabbits from coming and shearing down the plants. They don't like walking on this because their feet get stuck in it, and they're not going to crawl under here. You also want to drop in a couple of bamboo stakes. You can put some string across here and your peas will have something to trellis on. But remember, peas can take a freeze, they can take a frost, so you can get them out into your garden early. Just make sure the area drains well. Now there's a lot of good reasons why you may start your peas indoors. The biggest reason is, is that perhaps you have 
an environment where if you plant peas in the ground, they stay too soggy, it gets too cold, and the seeds actually rot. So germinate them in these seed cells and transplant them out. This is eight days worth of growth. You don't need grow lights. Go ahead and plant them just like this. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Bring them out during the day. They can take a freeze, you know, as long as it's 33 degrees or something, let them do their thing. Bring them in at night. The warmth will keep the roots warm and they're gonna germinate just like this. Let me show you how to set this up. Now I've done a lot of pea starting videos, so I don't feel like I need to show you how to put the peas into here. Most importantly, pre-moisten your starting mix, pack it in densely into the starting cells. If you're going to use peat pots, the plastic cells, or cups, just put a lot of soil in there because the peas are large seeds, they get really big root systems, so put a lot of soil in there. The setup is key. The peas grow so quickly, you want to make sure, look at the root system, you want to make sure they have something to grow into and all you have to really do is put extra wait till you see the roots on here put extra growing mix down here this way it holds moisture the roots don't dry out between waterings and you can drop these right into the ground now for the peat pots I like I really actually don't like peat pots except for peas look at that root system these can be dropped right into the ground. Just make sure you leave starting mix in there. Fill it up with the starting mix. I put two seeds per cell. Eight days you're going to get growth like this. When you go to put them into the ground, I'm going to show you how to do that. Just break them open like this. Break it open and then we're going to drop it into the ground. And I'm going to show you container planting and earth bed planting. But this is all you have to do to start peas indoors. One seed per cell here and I forgot to do this but usually I tear the bottom here so that when I go to pull the plug out, let me give you an example, I don't damage the pea plant. This is all you need to do to start them indoors and this is a really great way to not really have to struggle with wondering if your seeds are going to germinate out there, if they're going to rot. Just start them indoors. Eight days you get this put them into the ground. Now the key is, is when you start these from the point when you drop the seed, within two weeks you want to get them outdoors. You don't want to get tons of growth up here. You want these to get into the ground as soon as possible and you really have a 10 to 14 day window to do that. Now it's pretty straightforward. Peas can fix their own nitrogen. That means they can pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere. Loosen up your container soil. Containers are a great way to start your peas early if you're going to do them by seed or by transplant because they drain really well and that's all peas want. They want a nice moist environment that drains well and they will do their thing. Now you can pack peas in here. I've done other videos where I might put in 8, 12, even 15 pea plants and they do perfectly fine. So we're going to put in Let's see, we're going to put in six cells, that's 12 plants, into this section. And this is my purple potted pea. What you want to do when you're using the peat cells is peel the side down. Because if these, sit, if these edges here sit above the surface, they actually wick water away from the surface. Nice loose soil if you want to drop in. And one more thing is break the peat pot. Even though it says roots grow through there, I like to put little holes in there. If you want to put in some organic fertilizer, put in two tablespoons of your favorite organic fertilizer. And what I recommend is staying at about a 555 fertilizer for most of your garden. We just don't need as much fertilizer as we're told. You also want to give them something to trellis on because they do need to climb and hold on to something. The uh, stems are actually hollow. They're really fragile. They're not at this point, but as they get bigger, the wind and just contact with them can actually break the stems and you don't want that. I'm going to use a tomato cage. This is like a four foot cage. I won't be planting tomatoes for a good six weeks and they won't need this cage for a good 12 weeks. Drop it in like that and my transplants are set up. So here's another way to trellis them. This is chicken wire that I just leave up. And I'm going to put the purple pods right along here. Same way that I did the container, just make sure you peel the tops down, break the sides, and drop them in. Nice loose soil. Drop them in. I'm putting them a little bit closer in the soil because the roots can grow down. They're not going to compete with each other. 
That's why I like raised beds. Besides potentially having my seeds rot, the next biggest problem I have is rabbits. So, again, chicken wire right along here. Let them grow through it, keeps the rabbits out, and now you got your peas in the ground. And ground planting is pretty simple. I'm planting these two inches apart. These are my purple potted peas again. I'm gonna plant them by seed. So about two inches spacing that way, and then coming across to this side, another two inches. And it's real easy. Here are the peas. They're a little bit hard to see because they're a darker color. Loosen the soil, you could put in two tablespoons of organic fertilizer if you want. Just press these down about one inch. Again, this is in a raised bed. The soil's loose, it drains well, and this is how easy it is to plant about 24 pea seeds in this small space. I'll drop a bunch of sticks on top of here. Usually when I cut my apple tree back, I just drop the sticks in and around my peas, maybe six of them, and they will link together. They will climb up each other. They will hold on to the apple tree branches and I'm gonna have a wonderful, wonderful cluster right in this small space of 24 pea plants that are gonna do extremely well. Well, I think we've covered planting pretty well. I'm not gonna show you how to put them into containers. It's the same way. Loose soil, just pressing two seeds into a space. There are two, four, six, eight, ten peas in that area a nice trellis and that will give them something to grow up. Kim and I have a Facebook group called Gardening Coast to Coast and what's unique about it is, is that every post is tagged with the gardening zone. So if you're in gardening zone 6 you can go to the group and you can search gardening zone 6 and find all the posts that are relevant so you can see what other gardeners are doing in your gardening zones. And here's Kim, she's going to show you what's happening in her garden and I know that she's harvesting and eating peas right now them into bolting and they become the plants yeah, the plants can <laughs> the plants can become bitter and they also flower and you just start losing. I'm gonna talk about harvesting, about trellising, whoa, and some of the things that you do um, with peas as they get into Well Gary is just planting his peas on the east coast. The season here on the west coast for peas is actually coming to a close. Winter time is a perfect time to grow this cool weather crop. I've actually had mine planted since November or December. So today I want to show you some easy trellis ideas for peas as well as show you a harvest of my pea crop. Well here I have a beautiful pea plant with some absolutely gorgeous flowers on a very simple teepee trellis. Now this is just three bamboo stakes stuck in the ground and wired together at the top and I absolutely love the pea flowers. This is actually a more compact variety of a pea and these flowers are gorgeous. Now we are getting some unseasonably warm weather right now. It's been about 90 degrees and as we know by now peas like the cooler weather so I'm hoping to get a harvest before this pea plant dries up in the heat. Now here I have a taller variety of pea. This is a sugar snap pea in one of my DIY tomato cages. Now tomato cages were great for trellising peas and in this cage you can just kind of weave the peas in and out of the wires here. You don't even have to really attach it with anything but if you do need to attach it with something um, what I like to use is this stretchy plastic garden tie tape. I always carry this around in my pocket with me because you never know when it's going to come in handy. But the great thing about peas is they don't really need a lot of fertilizer and here in Southern California it's very dry, very little humidity. We don't have a lot of problem with diseases like powdery mildew so I don't even usually have to spray for anything like that. Now let's go up on my deck where I have some peas growing in a container and we'll show you some that are ready to harvest. I do like to fertilize my peas growing in a container every couple of weeks just to give it that extra boost it needs because container peas do tend to need a little bit of extra water and extra nutrition. And my favorite fertilizer to use is worm tea, Vermistera's worm tea. It's an excellent liquid fertilizer but use whatever you have on hand. But the exciting thing about these peas is that I do have some that are ready to harvest. Now these I actually have trellised on just a very simple garden stake and this is also a more compact variety and look at these peas. These look absolutely delicious. They're actually one of my very favorite garden snackables and often they don't even make it inside. So let's harvest these today. They're super easy to harvest. Just grasp the vine in one hand and the pea in the other pick them off, 
And don't forget to eat them before you take them inside. Oh, they're so delicious. Mmm. Oh, they're just so good. You can see these peas are nice and plump. You can harvest them when they're a little bit flatter if you'd like to. But these look absolutely delicious. Perfect for picking. Well, I'm pretty happy with my little pea harvest I got from this plant behind me, and I'm hoping the weather cools off so I can get a harvest from my other plants very soon. Well, whether you're growing peas on the East Coast, on the West Coast, or somewhere in between, hopefully this video will help you grow more peas no matter where you're located. So comment below, let us know where you're growing peas and what your favorite pea growing tip is. And make sure you subscribe to both of our channels so you don't miss any more of the Gardening Coast to Coast videos. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.